So I feel kind of awkward making this video, not gonna lie, a little uncomfortable, but I do feel like I, I need to speak up for myself. Um, I have been notified by quite a few people at this point that my ex, you know, the huge falling out that I had, all the cheating scandals, I guess apparently he made a video about me again. Um, this time, you know, it's, it's been some time, first of all, since a lot of that happened. Uh, unfortunately, I do still hear about stuff all of the time. Uh, and I think that that was basically the premise of his video that he hears about me all the time and it bothers him, <laughs> God forbid. The problem, and well actually there's a few problems, but the first problem I noticed immediately was uh, the thumbnail is really disturbing to me. It's, it's hard to explain exactly the way that that, that kind of thing makes me feel. Um, I, the, the, the entire experience of what I went through and how public it was and how much attention there was on it and on me and the overwhelming sense of it all was very difficult. It took a lot for me to process that. I do think that sometimes when people go through things, uh, it, it takes a long time to not get over the person, but heal from the experience. And that is something that I think is, uh, I still struggle with it. So there is a, an element of reactivity in me whenever I see that someone like that makes a video about me that puts me back in kind of a, a negative headspace. So, you know, there should be some kind of awareness that that happens. And I feel like if you wrong somebody, uh, at least to the extent that I feel that I was, you should probably do everything that you can to avoid further causing any even slight harm to that person. So the fact that a video was made really to me is not cool, um, especially at this point in my life. I don't need stress, I don't need negativity. Even if you sit there and say you're so happy for me, but basically use me and my pregnancy as clickbait to talk about yourself, I'm sorry, that is extremely selfish and still puts me in a place of having to deal with hearing about you. Seeing my pregnant belly in a thumbnail um, like that, on someone like that's channel, uh, is, it makes me pretty livid. I don't think that it's right. I think it's extremely inappropriate. If you feel the need to talk about your experience and that you're tired of hearing about me, that's, you know, whatever, I don't care. Continue the pity party that you started for yourself a long ass time ago, but do not clickbait my pregnancy. I think the video should come down. I think that there's a lot that's really wrong with it, but at the very least, that thumbnail needs to be changed. I'm really struggling to, I feel like, 100% convey the way that it makes me feel. It, it really does, like, it makes my stomach turn. I feel kind of sick seeing someone that was so toxic in my life take something so innocent and so pure and, and something that represents a life shift that I had to go through after recovering from some bullshit, you know, and then put that in your stupid thumbnail. Like, it's just so hard for me to explain the way that that just makes my heart drop and how uncomfortable and just gross that I feel. I can't, I cannot explain it. You know, this coming from a person who is trying to say that they're happy for me, right? Trying to exhibit in some sense, at least I think in saying that they're happy for me, that they're maturing about the situation or trying to move on from the situation. But I think if there's gonna be any decency that's actually shown, that thumbnail will be taken down immediately because I've made it known now at this point that I don't like it, it makes me uncomfortable. And I'm gonna add to that, I also think that the, the fake, the stupid fucking wedding video that I was in, I think that needs to go too. Because if you search my name and my wedding with my husband, if my children search their mom and dad's wedding, I'd really rather not have that pop up. It makes me uncomfortable. The thumbnail of it makes me uncomfortable. I'm not gonna go through every single video that I've ever been in and nitpick, but that one in particular feels inappropriate. And it, like I said, it makes me uncomfortable. I'd like for it to disappear. At least just change the thumbnail and take me out of the tag so it doesn't show up when my name is searched. That's all I want. Ideally, it would just disappear. Honestly, that should have happened years and years ago when all this started. Like, that, that's just out of respect. And yes, let me make it very clear. I know the information on the breakup, and I hate even calling it a breakup because it's not like two people were like, it's not working, let's break up. It was, it was really ugly. 
Um, you know, and I, I know that information on that is never going to leave the internet in its entirety. I'm not asking for that. I, I do want to acknowledge I made a lot of the situation public myself. When everything happened, I, I was getting attacked and this might not be true for everyone, but for me at least, I felt empowered in, in speaking out for myself and standing up for myself and trying in whatever way that I could to take a little bit of control back over my life. It'll always be out there. And part of that is because of me and I chose when all that happened to stand up for myself. And I never will regret that. I'm never gonna regret that I showed a side of my own vulnerability and was open about it because to me, speaking out, standing up for myself was empowering myself in some kind of way after I had felt like I was basically reduced to nothing emotionally. I was really at a very low low and that was just something that I felt that I needed to do to help myself and it did. It completely did. I have no regrets for standing up for myself in the way in which I did then or even in some small sense now. I know that it brought me a lot of attention as the girl that got cheated on. I literally at that time would get recognized in public, not as Jacqueline, but as that girl that got cheated on. And I could have chosen to be upset about that. I could have chosen to let it get to me, but I turned my pain, I turned my experience with all of that into something that I wanted to make almost a teachable moment for other people out there that were going through similar things. And because of that, I've left some of my, you know, more emotional things out there on purpose. I want people to see where I was and where I am. That does not mean, that does not mean, however, that they need to see a fake wedding video, okay? You can watch somebody heal. You don't need to watch somebody in that toxic relationship, especially whenever it pops up, whenever I actually search for my wedding now, it makes me really uncomfortable. But I'm just trying to point out the difference and hope that that's understood. Yes, I made a choice to speak out about what I had to go through, but I didn't make the choice to have to go through that to begin with. That was something that someone else did to me and if they have to still live with the consequences of their actions, I don't think I should have to hear about it. You know, you make your bed, now you gotta sleep in it. The constant need to throw a self-pity party to me shows a lack of personal development and change, which is something that I truly was hoping for. The thumbnail of this video, the content of this video, really displays the lack of growth. The way that he has treated women since me shows a lack of growth. I mean, it's not like we're dealing with somebody who felt so much remorse when it happened. Like the falling out that, that was experienced wasn't because of a breakup. It wasn't even necessarily because of the nature of how, how gross the breakup was. It was because of the way it was handled. I, I mean, he, he mocked me. He, he laughed at the whole situation. He was taking shots, watching his subscriber count drop like it was some kind of joke. He took letters that I had written or things that I had left at his house and sold them online to fans, like songs, like uh, content beyond content beyond content was created. And I'm sorry, that's not what you see from someone who genuinely feels bad for the hurt that they've caused someone else. That's someone who feels bad because they're losing subscribers. And my point in bringing this up is it's just really hard to feel sorry for somebody and to see someone constantly seeking that validation of like a pity party who never showed actual demonstrable growth at all in any area. In the way that the situation was initially handled to relationships after that to even present day ridiculous videos and thumbnails being made that are clearly disrespectful. Apparently he gets notified when I get married or, or that I was pregnant and he's tired of hearing about it. He's tired of people reminding him of the bad things that he did and that's fine but I don't think you should make a video complaining about it. I think you should make a video owning it. Imagine the difference if you made a video saying, I get constant reminders of this and you know what? I deserve it. And this is how I've grown since then. And I just hope that one day I can be a better person at anything, any, any accountability as opposed to this. But not only did that not happen, it was just anger. It was such contempt for the people that do still point out the wrong. And I'm sorry, but you're gonna get that. You're gonna get that, it's the internet. And the breakup that happened was 
beyond what I ever thought it would be as far as people taking interest on the internet because of it. I went on a tour with my husband and the number of people that would come up to me and talk to me about their experiences. It's just, it, it became something that not only was my experience, but just resonated with so many other people and their experiences. You cannot expect that to just go away. Something that big that hits that deep with people, that doesn't just go away. Own it, stop complaining. And the worst part is that such contempt was shown towards these people that he literally, and I'm, I just, I can't even play the clip, that he literally said to pick up a gun, put it in your mouth and pull the trigger. He already had someone, uh, one of his fans, a big fan, kill herself. And that was something that was pretty widely talked about. So talk about not showing any personal growth. We're also going to send the message to thousands of people that they should put a gun in their mouth and pull the trigger. After you already had someone do that, you'd think that it would be, you know, something that would cross your mind to not do. To me, that is wildly irresponsible. I cannot believe something like that is, can, can come out of someone's mouth without them realizing how toxic it is. Like you have to delete that video. You have to delete it. You cannot leave a message like that up on your channel. You cannot. You have young fans. The risk is just not worth it. It's not worth it. It's a disrespectful video to begin with. At least, Jesus, even if you leave my fucking body in your thumbnail, even if you exploit my happiness and my pregnancy and refuse to let me move on because you keep getting comments. Even if you can't do that, edit that part out. I know that it's possible. You can go into the YouTube editor and take out the part where you literally tell your young fans to off themselves. The audacity. It just makes me so angry. And when I saw all of that, I felt the need to absolutely make a video. And I hate it because like, I know people are going to say, oh, you're giving him attention, but I do not feel bad about the type of attention you might get as a result of this video because it needs to be said and i am not the type of person and you guys know me right i'm not the type of person to let someone get away with using me especially someone who has used me already as much as they possibly could mess with my life as much as they possibly could and still have not shown any growth I'm not gonna let that slide. What's frustrating too is what's the point? What's the point? At the beginning of his video, he was literally admitting that he knew making the video would cause more people to remind him of the things he doesn't wanna be reminded of. So if that's really how you feel, what's the point? Attention, good or bad, doesn't matter. The last thing I wanna say before I leave this is I know that you know, especially if you if you watch my like pregnancy videos and stuff on on the vlog channel or our family vlog channel, if you watch, you know, anything that I'm doing online or look at my Instagram photos, I am at a extremely amazing point in my life and I don't want to discredit that at all for a second. But I like to be a very honest person and I never want to paint a picture that things are 100% amazing. Like I've been very open about mental health on my channel um, for as long as I can remember. And even in my video where I, I, on the vlog channel where I'm finding out that I'm pregnant, I, I mentioned that, you know, I was confused about my symptoms early on because I had been on medication. I was taking a combination of antidepressants and anti-anxiety medication that I had to stop or I had to wean myself off of when you know we decided to, to get pregnant because it's not healthy for a, a baby, it's not compatible with a, a healthy pregnancy, or it might prevent you from getting pregnant to begin with. So I had to wean myself off of those. But prior to that, I had been on medication and I, I wanna make it clear. I know that time has passed, right? But for me, and we don't have all day to be here in this video, I've gone through a lot in my life, a lot from, from childhood to all of my dating experience. Like I, I've just perpetually dated really bad people until the end of my last breakup, I had to really switch my life around. I had to seek out therapy and seek out medication and try to figure out what was going on in my life that made me value myself so little that I would get into these situations with such toxic people. And it took a lot of work. It took a lot of rehashing the past and having to re-experience things in order to be able to move on from them. And 
I don't care who you are, that's hard. That is hard work to do on yourself. And I'm thankful that I, I did because I don't think I would have ever found David or ended up in a relationship where someone actually cared about me um, or, or found myself in this situation where I, I'm having a baby and starting a life and, and trying to actually make healthy choices for myself mentally. Um, you know, it takes a lot to get to that point. You can get over a person, and I've said this before, I think I made a video of the long-term effects of getting cheated on. You can get over a person, right? You cannot miss them. You can be indifferent to them, which is honestly kind of how I feel in general, unless something shitty happens and I feel the need to address it. There's, there's overwhelming indifference and that's great. It's a great feeling to, to have that, but that doesn't mean that you are completely healed from the events that took place. Um, whenever you have to move on from things, they have long lasting effects on you. It, it causes a lot of self-worth issues, self-doubt, and that doesn't go away in a few years. It just doesn't. When someone puts your mental health and your physical health at risk, those can lead to long-term consequences that do not go away in a few years. So it gets under my skin to see someone feel entitled enough to complain about seeing comments here and there, reminding you of what you've done, internet reminders, notifications, really? <laughs> um, I had to go through quite a bit. I've had to process quite a lot. And even though I'm at a happy point in my life that I am so thankful to have gotten to, I still have to do work on myself to not have emotional negative effects from things that I have gone through in my past, including the breakup that is just so nonchalantly thrown out there. It's not, it's not something that just goes away. I have had to deal with far more than what I've ever publicly talked about because I, I share up until I'm comfortable and that's just how I am. People think I share everything. I don't. I keep some things to myself that are pretty personal, but I'll tell you what, I have suffered the consequences of that relationship. I didn't choose for those things to happen to me, and I still have to deal with it to a degree. And I'm so, so sorry that you might have to as well. Must really be hard. Delete your video, take down the wedding video, and try to demonstrate some ounce of moral accountability or personal growth instead of complaining, try it. Meanwhile, I'll keep living my life. I'll keep doing my personal work and trying to make sure my mental health is in check. I have to, I feel like almost daily fight a war with myself where I have to convince myself that I even deserve the life that I have because I have been so trained throughout my life to feel like I don't deserve happiness. That that's just the kind of the girl that I am, the life that I meant to live. So, you know, getting married was, was something that I had to like wrap my head around um, getting pregnant and starting a family and, and having like an actual functional good life is something that I have to really look at myself in the mirror sometimes and, and try to convince the girl looking back that she deserves it. I'm gonna keep doing that. I'm gonna keep living my life. I'm gonna move past this. I said my piece. There is some sense of, of immediate comfort and relief and even addressing it and standing up for myself. I'm never gonna not be that person again. I was that person for far too long and she is gone. I am burning up. <laughs> Being eight months pregnant is super fun, but I am looking forward to the future. I am optimistic and I am happy. I wanna, I wanna put that out there. Overall, I am very happy just because you know, people still have to go through things and people still have to struggle with their mental health doesn't mean they're not thankful and that they're not overall a happy person. I would call myself right now a very fortunate, happy person that occasionally has to deal with some stuff, but you know, we're all human, right? If you wanna follow my pregnancy journey, I have been posting a lot about that on my family vlog channel. If you search Frank Family Vlogs on YouTube, you can find us, it's my happy place. This channel, I'll always love this channel. It's always gonna be near and dear to my heart, but this channel is where where this type of content goes if I'm mad about something. This is Mad Jacqueline. My other channel is Happy Jacqueline, and I know I'm talking a lot about being happy and personal growth and where I'm at in life. So if you wanna see more of that, you can go over there, youtube.com slash Jacqueline Vlogs or search Frank Family Vlogs on YouTube. Because you know what, damn it, I am happy. I am proud of where I, you know, have grown in my life, where I was to where I am. I'm proud of that. 
you know, I could be embarrassed and I am, I still am. But the overall feeling for me is, is pride. And I, I can literally look at, it's almost like having a diploma, right? You have your degree on the wall, you can see something you accomplished. I can look on the internet and I can go from then to now and I can see what I've accomplished and I'm, damn it, I'm proud of it. This is kind of a side note, um, but I remember after all the backlash, whenever the, the breakup actually happened, I was in, God, Scotland. I was in Scotland. Um, <laughs> I was gonna be on this tour and uh, I, I found out there and was gonna fly back home, but I was so, I felt so unstable and in kind of a dangerous mental space that I decided to instead fly to Illinois to spend time with my dad and have him help me kind of get through it. And I went to one of his shows in Nashville, which is where I live now, crazy. I went to one of his shows in Nashville and I just remember, you know, the internet was buzzing. Everybody was wondering where I was. I hadn't posted anything yet. People were wondering if I was okay. Uh, people were telling me I needed to um, off myself actually at the time because the, the sad tweets were happening. I can't believe she left my, my tour. Uh, people were like attacking me, but people were actually worried about me too. And I remember I was at my dad's show and I went into the bathroom and there was a circular mirror. It's weird how you remember things. There was a circular mirror in the bathroom and I remember just taking a picture of myself in that mirror and posting it on my Instagram just to let everybody know I was okay. And a couple of weeks ago, my dad had a show at the same place and I went into the same bathroom and I saw that mirror and it just like, I had a flashback. I'm like, oh my God, this is the same place I was standing at a very different time in my life. And I took another picture standing there just, just to feel, so I don't know, it, just, it made me feel better. Like, I'm like, wow, I wish the me then could look into the mirror and see the me now and just see the difference. And I took a picture and I'm like, wow, I'm, I'm married, I'm happy, I'm pregnant, how crazy how much my life has changed. Anyway, I should post that second picture, but if you're somebody who is going through something or has gone through something and you feel like there's not hope or that you can't turn your life around, I hope I'm living proof that you can and I hope it gives you some, some confidence and hope. And that's all, that's all I wanna say. So thank you guys for watching this very weird, strange, kind of uh, a little bit personal, uncomfortable video. And uh, thank you for being supportive of me and my life and all the things that I'm going through. It really means a lot to me. So until the next time, I'll see you later. Bye.